Hey, what's up guys? Jack and Matt here with the Toasty Bros. And today we got an interesting one for you because this is actually a 12th gen i7 tablet and we're going to be testing games on it because that's what we do here. Yeah, it's a 12th gen i7 tablet, the one notebook from 1X Player. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be very interesting to see exactly what a 12th gen tablet looks like and why 12th gen tablets exist. Well, we're about to find out, but first a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by GVG Mall, the online marketplace to gain access to some really awesome some discounted game keys and more specifically Windows 10 licenses. With Windows 10 it is so easy just to go onto the website using the link in the description down below and then go to the Windows 10 click buy it now add code TB20 then go to the checkout put in your payment info and then boom you will get within a few seconds or a few minutes an activation code that you will go into Windows 10 put in the activation code and it is fully legit it will work out of the box and you will have a fully activated Windows 10 license. We use GVG Mall for all the PCs we built here at the Toasty Bros and so should you. So definitely check the link in the description down below and use code TB20 to save money on checkouts. So this tablet contains a i7-1260p, which is a 12th gen i7 that's a laptop i7 essentially, and it is 12 cores and 16 threads. So it really does not seem like a laptop processor, but I'm definitely excited to see exactly how it runs because usually there's some gimmicks with laptop processors, whether they have really low clock speeds or really low core counts, but I don't expect this tablet to underperform in any way with that i7. So let's not waste any more time and open this up. It has a very sleek box that I wanna see what's inside. Do the keyboard first, because we always like to go from least exciting to most exciting. So the keyboard definitely looks kind of exciting because it has like a really nice textured finish. Um, it looks like it'd be, so, yeah, it's like a leather. That's kind of interesting. So yeah, it's like a kind of all in one, like silicone leather type deal, a little bit fuzzy, definitely feels nice. And it looks like, here we go. So yeah, our tablet will just connect like a pretty much a standard tablet and then it transforms into a laptop essentially. It looks like we got a little stylus here too. Ooh, artwork. And it, and it looks like it has like, yeah, we got some buttons here. Um, it has a, a pin that actually has, it might have a changeable tip because that's a little bit of springiness to it. So that's pretty cool, but pretty standard looking keyboard. Um, we got a trackpad and everything. So everything a laptop would have, but of course we have a tablet to start with. And so let's see, we get this thing out. Definitely a thick boy tablet. So this is obviously not like your, your iPad really. This is more of a surface type of deal. And it actually even has this little guy right here. And man, that is sleek looking like these little copper um, hinges. I've never seen that before, but I'm definitely liking it a lot. As far as branding goes, I mean, you don't really get much of anything. I do see that we have the, oh, it's an i5. We got the i5. <laughs> well, well, now we know. We'll just keep running with it and we'll just dub the intro, I guess. We'll dub the intro. It's an i5. We got the i5 version. So you probably saw the, no, you didn't see the intro where we said it was an i7. This is an i5. So we thought we had the 1260p. This is actually the 1240p. I'm curious if this one has efficiency cores. We'll have to take a look at that. We were not prepared for this, but we do have 16 gigs of RAM. We have a 5 12 gig SSD. And um, other than that, it looks like it's probably still the same tablet. Yeah, we were expecting an i7. So yeah, whatever, what are you gonna do? And then it looks like in the box, we also get it is a, place a square. That's probably for you to like put a charger or something like that extra in, I guess. Um, but let's see what kind of power brick we get. Wow, oh, it's so cute. Ooh, it's USB-C. I can never nice. complain about that. They have their own branded braided cable. Well, it feels pretty nice actually. Um, and let's see how many watts this bad boy puts out. It's a 1.5 amp. Uh, let's see, it is- Did you do some calculations? Yeah, it doesn't even say the watt. Normally those um, won't give you watt. Um, 20 times 3.2, 3.25, what's that? Like 60 watts. Yeah, 60 watts, so, what is wrong with that? Yeah, we're gonna say, uh. it's I, I think it outputs around 60 watts. Calculating. So. Um, but yeah, so I'm pretty excited. We'll go ahead and go over the ports real quick before we plug it in. And this is a little bit different than our normal laptop, you know, video because like we got extra things. We have a stylus, we have a detachable keyboard, but on the tablet itself, we have our power button right up top and then right next to that we have a USB 3. We have a combo headphone jack. We have a micro SD card reader for expansion and whatnot. We have a plus and minus for the volume button. Always a nice feature to have those physical. We have a, what is that, mini display port? Or is it mini HDMI? Mini HDMI. Mini yeah. HDMI out, a USB type C, and then a USB 3.0. Once again, those might be 3.2. Um, and then we have the stand, those, this right here, so that you can connect it uh, to the keyboard. And we'll see how easy that is. It should be like magnetic, it should be pretty simple. Oh yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's a strong magnet. And then there you go. It sits up just like this. So these things are pretty nice because you can just do this, you know, when you're ready to go, fold this up and then boom, you got your all-in-one solution. And then once you want to, you know, fold out, you got Starbucks, whatever, you're showing a client something, you just whip this out. But let's go ahead and see if this thing has any juice. I think it has like a peel on it too. You think so? I'm scared if this isn't a peel. It really looks like a peel. It's like really on there. I, I see oh, yeah, it, it looks yeah. separate. Oh, okay, cool. Ooh, satisfying. There we go. Just a moment. And now this should come with Windows 11 on it. I would be really surprised if it didn't, but it's um, 12th gen, so it's pretty standard. I see point. myself in the reflection. 
Oh yeah, dude, taking off that peel probably made that reflection real nice. So we're gonna go ahead and plug in our USB Type-C because I don't know if this thing will have power and probably, I mean, it has basic power plans. I don't know if it's like a standard Windows um, deal where it'll actually like, you know, nerf the performance if it's on power saving mode, but um, we are gonna be testing games on it. So of course we wanna have the best case scenario. Of course we got a webcam, we got speakers. Um, so it's everything you need. I mean, this is an all-in-one unit, just like a pretty standard laptop, except you can transform this bad boy into your tablet. You get to use this. Oh, ooh, very satisfying. And it does have like the hover. So yeah, look how far I'm off of it. And it, it does have that. So that's always nice. That usually means that it's pressure sensitive and everything. Um, but it's a sleek stylus. I like it. Ooh, that's the charger right there. It's USB-C, oh, just cool. like that. So you could always buy a splitter and charge both of these at the same time. I'm definitely digging this. I'm going to take it home. But yeah, what we're going to do is the usual. Get it all set up with some stuff. And uh, yeah, just see how well this i5 performs. We were initially expecting an i7. We also need to see how many cores and threads it is. Because it's a 1240p, which yes. makes me wonder, I'm like, is that like a 12400 where it doesn't have efficiency cores? Well, I doubt right it. right now. It has to have efficiency cores. Yeah. I mean, surely. I'd be so depressed if it didn't because that was part of the video. I was excited. Matt just looked it up on his handy dandy cellular device and we found that the i5 1240p is the same core count as the i7 1260p. They just have a different clock speed. You remember what I said about laptops and tablets having when they have i7s and they have Ryzen um, CPUs and stuff like that, they're never really what they seem to be. Like a Ryzen 7 in a laptop might only be a four core A thread. And same with i7s and i5s. So we're logging in right now. We're gonna get Windows 11 set up. We'll load a couple of games onto it and see how she does. All right, guys, we are now playing some games on this little tablet computer, and uh, I just got scored on Inrock. Look at that, by dad. Wow, how great. Um, I do have the lights off because this is a very glossy screen, and it's very reflective, so um, yeah, it picks up a lot of our studio lights, so this is the uh, best view I can give you guys of some gameplay, but yeah, we're running at 1440 by 900 right now. The display on this thing is a 1440p display, but for some reason, the aspect ratio does not work very well in a game like Rocket League as I'm just getting absolutely torched by this guy. Look at that. Wow, another another score by him. But we are using those Iris XE graphics with that i5 1240p and as we mentioned, this is a tablet that's not necessarily designed for gaming, but you can play games like Rocket League on like performance settings at a lower resolution and you'll get close to 60 FPS if you really want to and maybe he's just being nice to me right now. Normally I'm pretty decent at Rocket League, but you know, right now I have no idea what's going on. It is also crazy to see DDR5 memory on a mobile device like this. DDR5 is definitely in its early stages, uh, but it's still pretty cool to see that uh, we're getting some of these like tablets and uh, more mobile devices that are rocking DDR5 with 12th gen. Let's go. But yeah, look at that Rocket League, more than playable on this thing. You can even get a victory in casual. You see, we're gonna be a good teammate. GG, well played. Not teammate, we're gonna be a good sport. Runs great, let's try another game. All right guys, the next game I'm going to test is Rainbow Six Siege. And we're just gonna stick with that same resolution of 1440 by 900 because it looks pretty good. It's not native 1440p, but on this small of a display, it looks pretty solid. And we're gonna gain a lot more performance that way in games. So we're gonna run the built-in benchmark and see what we can get in Rainbow Six Siege. This is definitely a more GPU dependent game compared to Rocket League. Um, so we'll see what this built-in benchmark shows. I'm not expecting great results just based on the menu FPS, but it's just cool to see exactly what the limits are of a little tablet like this in a eSports title that a lot of people like to play. Oh yeah, that's not looking too great. Now, one thing I did notice by doing some research on this is that this tablet is severely limited in terms of the power that is given to the CPU. So it's limited to like 20 watts. Um, and from testing that other people have done with these chips, they perform a lot better better at like 35 watts or greater. So that is one thing to keep in mind. These are being throttled down just so this thing doesn't like overheat because it doesn't have like crazy cooling or anything. So the performance is gonna be very limited. So do keep that in mind. All right guys, so we got an average of 30 FPS. Yeah, that didn't work very well as you can tell. So yeah, you're not gonna be playing games like this very well. But one game I do wanna try that I'm very interested to see how it performs is Valorant because Valorant is a much lighter version of like a Rainbow Six Siege. So, um, well, not exactly, but you get what I'm saying. It's a lighter first person shooter that can run on pretty much anything, but will it run on this? We're about to find out. Well, uh, never mind about Valorant. Uh, it's not, ha this tablet does not have a TPM and secure boot enabled by default. Um, I can give it a quick shot to see if I can uh, get into the BIOS by hitting delete or something, but it, be honest, I'm not gonna spend a ton of time trying to get TPM and secure boot to work on this tablet. So it looks like, 
All right, well, we're just gonna run with that. But it looks like the uh, tablet does not have a TPM option built into the BIOS. So I don't know why it was not enabled by default considering we're already at 12 gen here, but secure boot was enabled. So I, I really don't know where to go from there. So what we'll go ahead and do is try CSGO because I do have CSGO also installed. But yeah, that's why we didn't end up doing Valorant. All right, guys, the next game we're gonna be testing is CSGO and uh, running on that same 1440 by 900 resolution. And it's, it's, it's pretty stuttery. It's not great. I'll be honest with you. Oh. If I hit an ob kill, I would be pleasantly surprised. Oh crap, I didn't want random weapons. Yeah, no, again, like I, I just want to keep preaching that we're doing something on this tablet that is not necessarily designed for it. There are power limits in place that limit this thing from being fully utilized for things like gaming. Um, but you know what? We're, we're the Toasty Rose. We have to oh, see if we can hit op shots like that. Yeah, woo. Yeah, no, this, this isn't playable. I mean, you all probably already know that this is not a very playable experience in my opinion. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I just wouldn't recommend this thing primarily for gaming at the end of the day. It's just not a gaming device, but I'll show you guys here in a second. We're gonna run Cinebench just to see what the core count looks like um, and the core performance of that i5-1240p just to see for like content creation and work on the side, how powerful this thing actually is in a tablet form factor. So I'm gonna get one more kill because I don't want to subject you to laggy CSGO any longer and uh, then go from there. All right, here we go. Oh, there I go. All right, CSGO, let's move into some uh, built-in benchmarks. Okay, so we're gonna run Cinebench just to see exactly how well this thing does. It has 12 cores and 16 threads. I wanna see what that multi-threading looks like on a laptop and uh, just see how it compares to some other CPUs on the market. Again, this thing is being throttled down a little bit by power limits. Um, so it's not gonna be nearly as fast as it could be, especially with the base clock speed of 2.1 gigahertz, but we're gonna let this thing run, see what kind of number we get and compare it to some desktop top CPUs that you may know. All right, guys, so look like we got a score of about 1,609. Honestly, a little less impressive than I thought it would be in terms of multi-core. We're really not even pressing up against like some super high-end desktop CPUs. So I think in a tablet form factor, 12 cores and 16 threads, I think they're pretty underutilized in this device, but um, yeah, it's still a tablet PC. If you're looking for a tablet PC, it still has performance out there that you could use, but um, in terms of multi-core testing, it doesn't look too hot. So yeah, those are the benchmarks. Let's just bring Jackson back in and wrap this video up real quick. All right, guys, we just got done benchmarking this wonderful transforming tablet. And overall, for gaming, not great. I mean, you guys might have expected that. Matt did a little bit of research and found that this i5 is being held back a little bit because of that max TDP. It's only using around 23 to 25 watts, and it really should be at like 30 to 40, but it's in a tiny tablet, and they have to keep it cool somehow. They have to keep it energy conscious. So, of course, they had to hold back the performance in gaming. But that does not mean that in all the tasks you should buy this for, it doesn't do well because it is amazing for multi-rendering, multi-core, and obviously single core tasks. It's a great Windows PC. If you're looking for something that is fold and go, very portable and kind of unique, definitely check that link down below. We will link their Indiegogo campaign, but I believe unless that changes, that campaign will be over and you will have to buy from the website at the time of this video going live, but definitely check down below for up-to-date pricing if you're interested in picking this thing up. So as always, we hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, check out our other two YouTube channels and also our twitch.tv slash Toasty Bros. And do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye. So if you guys didn't know as well, we like to get rid of stuff like this when we're done with it. And we happen to have a PC selling business so that we can do that just for you guys. PC Bros. Tech is where we sell gaming PCs, gaming laptops, and a bunch of other cool stuff. And if you use Kotosi Bros. 2 on checkout, you can save 2%. See you guys later. Goodbye. Peace out.